So the young man, this young man came up to me after a hadith workshop. His earnest face full of questions about the relevance of the Islamic worldview in light of the ideas to which he'd been exposed in his high school and college classes. We sat down with a few other young people in a circle, a halaqa. Perhaps I thought if I dispensed with the formality of the chairs and whiteboard and projector and PowerPoint, and I just had the students focus on airing their most pressing questions that somehow we would find the answers that they were seeking. I looked at the young man as he was speaking, as he described the Islamophobia he'd experienced at his school, how he felt called upon to defend Islam, but felt like a hypocrite. And why did he feel like a hypocrite? Because he was now at a stage of his life where dialectical materialism was more convincing to him than revelation. You may ask, what is dialectical materialism? Well, according to the Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy, dialectical materialism rejects religious belief generally, denying the evidence of non-material or supernatural entities, specifically God and the idea of an immortal human soul. Again, this is a young man, Muslim, from a Muslim family at an Islamic event. And he said that for him, dialectical materialism was now more convincing. My heart sank. But then I said something to him. And for a moment, just a moment, I saw the tension in his face ease just a little. I told him that he did not have to carry this burden, this responsibility of explaining every single objection people have about Islam or something they'd read about the Prophet وسلم, or some text they'd come across or some sensational headline. I told him, Allah will carry it. Allah will protect his religion. That loving the Prophet وسلم, is fully possible without resolving any of these questions. That dialectical materialism was simply the arrogance of the Quraysh repackaged and restated in more academic language, right? Because they couldn't grapple the Quraysh, right, with the idea of an eternal soul. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Then he fashioned them and had a spirit of his own breathed into them. And he gave you hearing, sight, and intellect, yet you hardly give any thanks. Still, they ask, when we are disintegrated into the earth, will we really be raised as a new creation? In fact, they are in denial of the meeting with their Lord. Say, O Prophet, your soul will be taken by the angel of death who is in charge of you. Then to your Lord you will all be returned. And this is Surah Sajda, chapter 32, verses 9, 10, and 11. Sadaqallahul Alim. So again, dialectical materialism, it sounds impressive, it sounds fancy, I suppose, but what is it? It is the denial of the Quraysh, again, repackaged in perhaps more scientific terminology. 
Again, look at every single objection that new atheists raise. It's not really new. Go back to the Quran and see how the Quran responds to the objections of the Quraysh.